It's the middle of the summer. The weather is heating up and you're getting ready to go away on holiday for a couple of weeks. You've seen the photos of your friends that reek of nostalgia and sweet film grain and want to dip your toes in as well. After scouring the internet to find a cheap film camera, you decide to just try a disposable camera for the trip and see how well they turn out. To your surprise, after the trip, you get your photos developed to only have one or two photos turn out well. How could this be? It's a simple point and shoot, right? Was the roll defective? Did the roll get pre-exposed somehow? How is my friend, who isn't a photographer, getting such consistent shots? This is what was going through my head when I first started looking into shooting film photography and researching some of the cameras that went along with it. In fact, I shot my first film roll ever on a couple disposables, much unlike many of you, but quickly realized there is more to it than just these plastic cameras. So I'm here today to help guide you through the process of putting down these cheap plastic cameras and why they truly suck. First and foremost is the lack of flexibility and control when it comes to these suckers. Many times they're loaded with a 100 or 200 ISO film, which already is quite limiting with the light sensitivity you have in these cameras. On top of that, many can only shoot in one or two apertures, meaning that you're pretty much locked into whatever preset settings the camera has pre-baked into it. This means that without finding the perfect lighting scenario, which if you're a beginner, you probably won't really know what you're looking for realistically, you're gonna be shooting an over or underexposed image, which is not ideal. Basically, what I'm alluding to is that the camera has a very small window of light sensitivity where it is most optimal. So the good flexibility you get from many other point and shoot cameras that allow you to manipulate some settings to ensure correct exposure is basically thrown out the window with these disposable cameras. The second biggest issue with these cameras is that every time you go and buy a new one, you're having to buy a new plastic body, which is extremely wasteful. Not only is this wasteful, but over time, you would be better off buying a dedicated camera as it will eventually be the cheaper route if you're shooting often enough. Another big problem and potentially the worst of them all is that these disposable cameras have super shitty cheap plastic lenses. The image quality on these is quite frankly not very good and renders pretty low quality soft images. Compared to a dedicated point and shoot with actual nice glass, it is worlds apart in detail and quality. So now knowing some of the more glaring issues with these bad boys, let's talk about what the alternative is or what your best means to getting better quality on film is. So my biggest and realistically only suggestion is to put down the disposables and pick up a dedicated 35 millimeter point and shoot which you can easily find on eBay, which will render you significantly sharper results and give you much more control over each image. Now, I don't wanna to go too in depth about specific cameras and their price points, but I did put out a video a couple weeks ago that does go over, I think it's seven or eight point and shoot cameras that are all around $100 or less and are quite easy to find in today's market and will give you some good quality results. Now, I do think disposables have a niche spot in the market, and interestingly enough, I actually read somewhere that they make up a large portion of film photography sales in general. So I think that does say quite a lot about uh, kind of the state of film photography and that there are a lot of beginner consumers who are wanting to get into film, but are afraid of buying an actual camera or learning some of the difficult barrier to entry things that comes with film photography, that the disposables kind of give you a key to the aesthetic without needing to fully understand and grasp all of the concepts, theories, etc. So I think if someone wants to try shooting on a disposable for a trip or you know a party or whatever, I think that's totally cool and that they should totally try it and see if they like it and can get some good interesting results. But I do think if you're going to be shooting more than one or two disposables or really want to take up film as a hobby uh, going forward, I think that kind of biting the bullet and purchasing a camera that you can truly learn on, learn some of these principles, theories, and just basics of film photography so that you're actually improving instead of just kind of throwing shit at the wall and seeing what sticks is definitely worthwhile. Now, I think you'll have to do kind of some introspection to see where you fall on that line. You know, if you wanna just be shooting a disposable a year uh, on your vacation just for fun memories, or if it's something that you wanna be, you know, diving more into, I think that's something you have to gauge with your own interest and obviously with how expensive film photography can be. 
But otherwise, I think that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Let me know down in the comments below what you think about disposables. What do you think about their place in the market today? Like I said, they do make up a good portion of the market. So I think a lot of professional photographers kind of have to respect them, despite them feeling kind of like toys or silly gimmicks. They're more than likely keeping a lot of these older camera shops like Kodak uh, in business today. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching. Until the next video, guys. Peace out, stay shooting, adios.